Howdy y'all, welcome back to Maverick Mods. Today, shifting gears a little bit, which I tend to do sometimes. Uh, I know I worked on the interior last episode, but you know, sometimes folding this old bod inside and out of the interior of a car, it gets kind of hard on the old bones. And so this week, gonna switch gears a little bit and I'm gonna work under the car on the lift and reach over my head and really just destroy my shoulders. What are you gonna do? So today I'm gonna show everybody what I'm gonna go through to fabricate a custom exhaust system for the Firebird. Those of you that have been following me for a while know that when we picked the Firebird up, we inherited, well, we inherited a lot of parts and pieces. And one of the things we got was uh, what I think wound up to be somewhere between one and a half and two and a half cars worth of exhaust system parts. So I'm going to go through all of those parts and pieces, see what's usable, what's not, uh, what we want to use, and go from there. For those who don't want to watch me talk about pipes and stainless and uh, other things, if you want to fast forward to the video to about 20 minutes, that's when I actually start putting pipes together. For everybody else, strap in, let's go for a ride. This week we're going to spend a lot of time underneath the car. Now that I have a lift, it's actually pleasurable. While we're here, why don't we take a look at some of the work I've done so far that at best all you've ever seen is just fleeting glimpses of it while I'm laying on my back. So starting from the front, Obviously, basically everything back to everything on the frame back to here is everything I fabricated for the frame horns and the support. This is the engine cradle, engine suspension cradle off the Z28. It bolts in. Here are the frame rails from the Z28, factory suspension from the Z28. There's my little uh, temporary fake shocks, if you want to call them that. Z28 comes back, stops right here. That's where I grafted it to the Firebird subframe. All of this is going to get cleaned up when the subframe comes off. It's going to look nice and pretty. Uh, let's see, what else? I did these before... Uh, actually, I never wound up getting them on camera. I'm not sure why. I actually wound up making motor mounts. I, uh, I just didn't like the position of the engine where the cradle had to sit. Uh, I, it was sitting too high, a little too far forward, and I decided I could move everything back and down just for a better fit and a better position. Uh, let's see, what else is back here? I've got good header clearance here on the driver's side. Not quite as good on the passenger side. When I actually tighten this up, I think it may wind up uh, interfering. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of uh, tweaking somewhere to make a little bit better fit here. I'm still working on that. Uh, back we go. Here's the factory transmission mount that's been adapted with my own uh, bracket here to fit the six-speed transmission. Up in there you can see some of the work. It's still a little ugly. Uh, moving the transmission tunnel over. Here is the bottom side of what the subframe connectors look like. I've got some fish plates already on the subframe and basically I'll put another one that will connect the factory subframe to the uh, subframe connectors after everything goes back together. I have to do a little bit of finish welding on this as well. Let's see. Here we can see my fabricated trailing arms that are sitting in the factory leaf spring pockets. Goes back to the uh, rear end from the Z28. Here's the torque arm. Of course, that's factory mount. This is the factory torque arm. And here is the portion that I fabricated because I needed to lengthen it just a little bit for it to fit in the, uh, the factory uh, uh, location there. 
Uh, we've got a drive shaft uh, being measured. Actually, I measured it. It's being uh, shortened. We'll have a drive shaft for it soon. Here are my coilover mounts with my fake shocks in for now. Here is the pan hard bar mounted to the rear end on that side. Frame mount on this side. Once the body comes or once the car comes back apart, goes back on the rotisserie, and I've got better angles for it, I will finish perimeter welding everything here, make that nice and solid. And there's my uh, additional uh, uh, support bar there. It's a, a cross member. Uh, plus the uh, shock mounts. So that's kind of a summary of the last several months worth of work on the drivetrain and uh, mocking up all of those components, uh, getting it ready for uh, uh, getting the car back on the road. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at all of the pieces of exhaust system that came with the car. Uh, if you guys remember back to episode one on the Firebird, uh, all of this was jammed in the trunk because that's the only place we could find to put it when we transported the car back. Had no idea what we had, had no idea, nothing, no clue whatsoever. Well, I finally dug it out of the pile and I've got a chance to take a look at it. So we're going to take a look at that here in just a little bit, see what we've got, see what we need and just see what is going to be required to make an exhaust system. First thing I have to do in order to start working on fitting the exhaust and the rear sway bar, which is going to mount, I'm thinking I'm going to mount it, I'm going to take advantage of these plates right here. I may have to, I'm going to have to cut this part off, this part over here. It's nice sort of reinforcing plate that I'm pretty sure I should be able to mount the rear sway bar too. Uh, we'll have to see just how it clears the coilovers uh, and uh, things like that. But uh, that might be a good place. These are the original factory muffler hanger brackets, which uh, at this point we're not using that setup and there's no room for it anyway. So they've got to go away or it'll be, a cl it'll be cleaner if they go away. So how's that? But in order to kind of see what I've got back here, I'm going to have to put the fuel tank in. So let me get the tank in and then we'll uh, move on to step two. So this is the original fuel tank and I know I should be using a stand, but let's see if we can get it up here without that. So this is the original fuel tank. So far, I see no evidence I see no evidence that it's leaking. That doesn't mean it's not, but we'll find out soon enough. Okay, there's one strip. There's the other strap. I don't have to put it in tight, tight, but I do want to get it, you know, obviously lined up just like it's going to be during final assembly. And what that's going to do is that's going to help me figure out where my exhaust system can run back in this area right here. It's just snug these up. I'm not going to tighten them up. I'm just going to snug them. There we go. That's good enough. All right. Next up, let's see what we've got for exhaust parts and pieces. Here's the exhaust parts and pieces we got with the car. Let's just start from the, the front or the back or right here. So we got one muffler used in the pile. We have uh, a, a really, well, we've got a steel worm. We've got three more steel worms. Those, and I'll show you that here in a minute. 
those are actually the uh, uh, tubes exiting the mufflers going back to the rear but some of them are set up I believe these here are set up for the original factory muffler location which means we can't use at least we can't use all of it might be able to use some of it can't use all of it these look like they might actually be set up for a true dual system again we'll get it all up there and take a look see we got an x pipe i uh, got some more straight and uh, bent short pieces these pieces here are for headers and these two pieces here are left and a right uh, pipe after the factory muffler that go to the tailpipes. So those are the parts and pieces we got. Oh, and we got exhaust tips. So, uh, interestingly enough, we've got brand new, still in its wrap, uh, exhaust tips. These are two inch. All the pipes are two and a half. So those... Well, they're going to go, unless somebody wants them, they're going in the pile. These tips, nice stainless tips. They're brand new. Unfortunately, I don't like the style, so I'm not going to use them. Um, I'll find a good home for them somewhere. Or if somebody wants them, maybe one of you guys can find a good home for them. So we've got what looks like the makings of enough exhaust pieces for at least one and a half maybe one and three quarters cars but there's a twist some of these pieces are just aluminized steel some of them are stainless and so for example this one's brand new well I say brand new it's never been installed because it's still got a sticker on it and that's obviously stainless same thing with some of these pieces these pieces are all stainless some of these other pieces are they just don't happen to have stickers on and there's a complication and the complication is obviously those are steel there's no question about that the tips here are stainless magnet doesn't stick to them however let's take a look at the x-pipe here this is stainless but it's magnetic so what's going on with that? The aluminized steel is just simply that. It's just steel pipe that has a coating on it, aluminum coating on it, to keep it from rusting as quickly as it would if it was just bare steel. Our tips here are made from, I believe it's uh, 304 or 306, I don't remember which. It's just a grade of stainless, uh, 304 or 306 stainless. That's why it's not magnetic. And of course these, which we're not using, are just chrome-plated steel. Up here though, on our other stainless pieces, so like for example, that one, that one, this one, they say they're stainless, and yet they're still magnetic. Well, these are made of, I believe it's 409 stainless, which is magnetic. It's just another grade of stainless steel. I don't want a hybrid half and half exhaust system where parts of it are stainless steel, parts of it are just regular steel or, or aluminized steel, but I still have to mix and match all of these pieces to figure out which pieces go where and what pieces we can use. One final complication to the whole exhaust puzzle is, and this is why you never throw anything away in a project until you absolutely know you're never going to need it again. So this is, was the salvageable parts of the original exhaust system on the Z28. Uh, I'm going to see just how much of this I can use. Uh, at least the, uh, the white pipe here, obviously we're not doing a white pipe, we're doing an X-pipe. But at least parts of the white pipe, it's got the uh, bungs for the O2 sensors in it. Any part of that that I can save, we'll, try, we'll give it a try. The Well, they're not really mufflers. I guess they're just baffles. This thing had basically what amounts to straight pipes in the back. Very little of this is probably going to be usable. Um, these things right here are kind of weird. Back when I was in high school, 
I used to see pickups with these things all the time. We call them echo chambers. If you ever saw a guy with these on his car, uh, you just laughed at him because nobody put them on cars. I, you know, we're not going to use something like this, obviously. And we're going with regular mufflers because we like our neighbors. And it looks like the rest of this is all just regular aluminized steel. So I don't think there's much of this that I'm going to be able to use. But I'll take a look and just see what, see what we have. Let's figure out which pieces are stainless, which pieces aren't. And near as I can tell, I think I can tell just by based on the hue of the metal. It, it, the more I look at it, the more I kind of get it out in the light. I think I've got a handle on this. So using these pieces, I hope the light can see this. There's just a difference in the metal hue itself between these four pieces. So these guys are stainless and these guys aren't. So let's get them out of the way. So just from a basic uh, uh, look-see at everything, I pretty much think I've got just about everything I need to make almost a complete exhaust system. I've got just about everything I need from the headers, X-pipe, back to the mufflers, we'll get the mufflers. I've got just about everything I need with all of the various parts and pieces to go exit the mufflers, over the rear housing, back up, down through the, uh, the fuel tank frame rail area, and then back here, we're gonna need tips, and I think we've got it. I have a clearance issue on the headers, which just kinda now has reared its head, and it's on the passenger side. Driver's side fits well, not a problem. Passenger side, I'm touching on the subframe. And there's really not a whole heck of a lot I could have done about that. But I'm trying to come up with a solution that will work. I think I've got it. We're going to give it a try. This may not work. This may just turn these headers into a big pile of uh, stainless steel spaghetti. But we're going to try it. I got out my port of power with the little, whatever they're called, spreader jaws, jaws of life, whatever those things are. I'm going to see if I can wedge that between the subframe and the header and put exert enough force that maybe I can bend. I need those headers to give me about a half inch of clearance. That's all I need. We're going to try it, see if it works. I'm going here to start with because I need to create enough room in here to get some wedges in. All right, and I'm just going to, where did I put my wedges? There they are. What I need to do is I need to move the spreaders from here back to here and see if I can really put some force at that point. But I need to make room just to do that. All right, let's try that. At this point, I'm probably just moving the engine on the motor mounts themselves. And that may be all that this winds up doing, but we're going to try it. Still not quite enough. Let's see what this does for me. Okay, let's see if that gave me enough room. Okay, I think that gave me enough room there. Let me get it up in here, see what we can do. Now I want this thing to turn. I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go there. I'm not hearing any metal crinkling, so that's a good sign. All right, I'm gonna release this and see what that gave me. All right. Of course, now I can't get my wedges out. So I guess I gotta go back here. Well, that actually did work. I've got 
Not enough clearance, but I do have some clearance. So we're gonna try this again. I have to go through the whole process all over again to get those wedges in. Well done it. All right, here we go. Kiss a fat dog's ass. Okay, so these guys are wedged in there. My finger is not. Get it back. Now, let's take and stick that guy up in there again. And let's see what this does. Okay. One more. All right, let's try that. Ow. Okay. All right, well, let's see what that gave me. Okay, so I've gained myself uh, probably about an eighth of an inch. I didn't have it before. I mean, it kind of worked. I'm really afraid to crank on the, that side of that header anymore. I don't want to collapse it. Well, let me think on this for a while. Well, the delivery guys just uh, gave us almost the last item we need for the exhaust. And so let's uh, unbox it real quick, see what we got. Don't need that. Don't need that. All right. All right. So what we got is Fullmaster FX. We're going to give them a try. I've never used the FX series. These are very common. It's a two and a half inch in, two and a half inch out. Uh, they're basically every muffler this size is the same size. And uh, there's tons of them out there, uh, different brands, different styles, but they all kind of seem to be just about this same footprint. So if we do decide we don't like the sound, then we can always change the mufflers. And believe me, I've got enough projects here that uh, these will wind up on something if we don't like them on the Firebird. So now that I have mufflers, we can get started mocking up the exhaust. I'm building the exhaust system, well, from the front back. So you can see I've got the X-pipe sitting up uh, just kind of in more or less the position it needs to be. A couple of pipes coming forward from the X-pipe, although these are going to have to be modified. So to start off with, I took the old Y-pipe and cut the ends off. And I needed to do that because I, uh, I want to keep the slip joint here and uh, this band clamp or this uh, ex uh, exhaust clamp. And just by the way, if you guys have never used these clamps, I love them. They are absolutely great. So... I've got it uh, cut, clamped in place. Now, what I'm dealing with here is the uh, system that we kind of inherited with the car is really uh, just a, a X-pipe stainless replacement for the factory exhaust for the factory exhaust system. And so obviously things aren't going to quite line up exactly the way they normally would. And as you can see, so I took uh, my reducer and I've got it lined up, but it obviously doesn't quite line up there. So the idea is I'm going to take and weld here. I'm going to cut it prior to this weld because why keep extra welds and then take the remainder of this pipe 
and seam it into this pipe. So let me uh, get this started. We'll come back and take a look at it. Well, working on a lift is so much easier than working on my back. It just makes life so much easier. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult still with camera angles to kind of show you what I'm doing. So bear with me and I'll kind of catch you up with where I'm at. So I'm still working on the driver's side here. I've got my reducer tacked in here and I cut the rest of that pipe off. That's this pipe right here. Now I went ahead and took the uh, angled pipes off of the X pipe that I had on before. And so let's see if I can find it. So this is where that sat originally. Obviously not gonna work. So I can do one of two things. And the idea was I can slide this forward until it matches down here. But in doing so, I wind up with a little bit of an angle right there. I'm not happy with that. But the benefit of cutting this pipe off is if I just spin it around and set it about right there, so that's about a half inch or so back, then it matches up perfectly and I don't have that angle problem. So all I've got to do is trim off about a half inch. I'll mark that and trim off what I need there and I'll trim that so that I get the slip joint into the X-pipe. All looks good. I've got my alignment mark set. I'm just going to kind of hold this and tack a few spots. Make sure I'm lined up. Centered. Place feels good. Looks good. Okay. Let me tack in a few spots. All right, now what I'll do is I will pull all of this back down, get another tack, just so everything stays in place and I'll put it all back in. So I got those tacks done. Got a slip joint there. There's one there. I'm probably going to have to come up with, uh, well, we'll see how it does. We'll see how it slips off, whether I can go solid all the way back to the mufflers. I might have to put a ball joint in here on both sides. We will see. But let me work on the uh, passenger side next, and I'm just going to duplicate what I just did right here. Status update on the exhaust system. I've got everything from the X pipe forward, mocked up, tack, tack welded, ready for, uh, well, fitting the mufflers next. With the exhaust system, mocked up back to the point where the x-pipe and the mufflers join one of the things i kind of figured out was that i need to angle the mufflers outboard slightly and i might actually rotate them a little bit just to get just a hair more ground clearance but before i go too much farther i've got to fabricate kind of a join here that's got that bend in it right at this point but before I go too far, I needed to mock up the tailpipe exiting the muffler to make sure I've got clearance. Now this piece was the, actually the driver's side and left side piece that normally would mount into the factory muffler location. So I figured the best way to, to get the bends I needed was to swap the pipes. And that's working so far. But what I found, I had to cut that pipe to get clearance, but I also need to rotate, if you can see, I need to rotate the end of it closer to straight back. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to cut it right here and re-weld it in a different location. So, all part of the process, so I can't start here until I get this part to my satisfaction. Now that I got my pipe cut, remember which side I actually cut, that side. Okay, let me stick it back in and get the point where I mark it where I need to cut it. So now I gotta reposition everything back to where it was. Okay, that's pretty close right there. 
to get my pen. Now, there we go. Alright, so I want that to come out. Let's see how we're doing here. That's better. Got clearance, everything is good. That looks and feels pretty good right there, although it is going to slide. F no, that's about right. Okay, I'm good there. So, angle that just about right there. That's pretty good. So let me mark these. And I'll go and tack these in uh, back and I'll retest fit it. Got the tack done. Let's test fit it again real quick. Go there, there we go. Alright. Okay, so that's all the way in the muffler. You get my muffler where kind of where it needs to be. I know I've still got a little bit of room here. I can still trim back here, which I know I needed to do, but I wanted to get this pipe cut and angled properly first. And I'm going to clear my coil over, so I'm okay there. And actually, this thing can rotate a little bit that way. It gives me a little bit better clearance. So we're looking good. Now I need to pull... Actually, before I cut this pipe and bring it closer this way, I'm going to go ahead and get my front muffler pipe set. I got my little bend piece tacked in. And you can see from the back, it doesn't bend much, but it's just enough that... You know, a straight pipe just wasn't going to quite cut it. I needed to move the muffler just a little bit. I've got good clearance here. I'm trying to obviously minimize, you know, how low this thing hangs. But there's only so much I can do right up there. Raising, you know, rotating doesn't really help a whole heck of a lot. So about where it is is about the best I'm going to get. And I do need to shorten now my tailpipe because obviously I can bring that at least another probably at least an inch farther in. So I'll cut off of this side. It's looking pretty good at this point. Well, zip ties to the rescue. I was contemplating, I needed to move my stand because it was kind of in the way of the other stand. Couldn't figure out at first because I don't have any hangers yet set up. So basically, I zip tied the exhaust system in a few points, the side that I've got done, just to hold it in place so I can use that to help align the other side. So on the uh, driver's side here, left side, I'm just gonna repeat the same process I did on the uh, first muffler and tailpipe back up to here. When I get that done, we'll take a look and see how my work is progressing. Exhaust update number 70 two and three quarters. The driver's side muffler is mounted. Again, I've got my uh, angled pipe tacked in. It's going to have the slip mount here. Same thing back here. And I've got my pipe over the axle. I'm probably going to have to wind up cutting this one a little bit closer in here to be able to turn this pipe this direction. Before I get too farther into this, I do actually need to mount the rear sway bar, at least the bar portion of it. Okay, I've got the beginnings of my rear sway bar mounted. Uh, I can't quite explain what I'm doing here yet, mainly because I screwed up and ordered the wrong size bar, or the wrong length bar. So we'll have to revisit that on a uh, different episode. What I'm going to have to do, though, before I do anything else, is I'm going to have to cut this pipe down because, as it is now, it's angling too close to the panhard bar. And I need to actually kind of come through here and kind of up this way. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy. I hate to leave a weld right there, but 
I'm going to go ahead and cut it about right here and then figure out whether I can just rotate this or I need to replace this part. Status update number, uh, I don't know, 15,000, something like that. So I've got the pipe angled past the uh, rear end housing coming out. I'm clearing everything here. I took the uh, what originally was the tailpipe piece cut. I've actually cut both ends. No, I didn't cut that end. I cut that end um, because I needed to fit it right up in here. And it fits really well there. It clears the fuel tank. It clears the where the sway bar is going to be. It clears the pan hard bar. It clears the coilovers. So that's a really good angle, and I like that. I've also got the exact positioning for the tailpipe exit. So what I need to do now is I need to I had to cut the uh, exhaust hanger bracket off here because this pipe originally I think was supposed to fit somewhere up in here but I had to reverse it like so and I don't need this anymore let me cut that off and we'll uh, stick this up in here and keep working at it exhaust update 51001 a so I got my uh, extension pipes all the way back around I initially thought about putting a band clamp here, but the more I thought about it, all you have to do is just drop the rear end a little bit and the whole thing will come out. And it's just cleaner if it's uh, uh, not a, uh, a, a clamp there. It's just cleaner if it's one continuous pipe, even with a weld. So I brought it out all the way down here. Now we're going to show you. Where'd the tip go, Mike? What's on your shirt, dude? Here it is, buddy. Excellent. Let's go, Brandon. Excellent. All right. Um, do you remember what I did with the tip, the exhaust tip? It's right behind you. There it is. Oh, yeah. Had a change of heart and decided maybe we could make these tips look okay. Better than okay. Maybe we can make these tips look good. So we decided to try and make these tips work by... Let me back up here a little bit and take a look see at this. Let's see if you can kind of get an idea of what we're, the idea here is. So instead of the tips coming straight out, we angled them down to try and kind of match the body line kind of right at the, at the tip here. So we're going to give that a try and see what it looks like. Once I get everything clamped in place, I am going to relieve and just kind of work the metal here a little bit to keep the pipes up as tight as I can. So we'll work on that. And next up is uh, work on the tailpipe for the passenger side. Update number, I don't know where we at, six million on the exhaust here. So I've got the last of the uh, bends and uh, everything formed on the tailpipe out to the tip. Got the tip mounted from the side. That's what they're going to look like. And from the back, I had to prop the one up on the other side with a jack here. But So that's basically what we're looking at from the back. I think it looks pretty good. Just about done with the mock-up phase on the exhaust here. So that I've got the tips, tailpipes, everything good all the way up. I do have a lot of welding up of all the joints. I'm gonna put uh, band clamps on the mufflers, both front and back. Where I've got a slip joint here on the front of the X pipe, I'm gonna weld those, but I can't do that quite yet. And the reason is, is with the, with the system in place as it is now, this is the downside to a slip joint fit type system. In order for me to take the pipes loose from the headers, the entire exhaust system would have to come off, or at least I would have to take it loose at the back of the mufflers so I could slide the mufflers off to slide the X pipe back in order to get my clearance to be able to slide off of the slip joint on the headers themselves. And there's a couple of different ways to address that. 
Uh, one of the ways would be change the slip joint on the headers. My solution is going to be at this slip joint right here, which there's just an extension pipe running from the X pipe forward. So there's actually two slip joints here. I'm going to eliminate one of those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a V band clamp right here on both sides. What that will allow me to do is when the time comes for the necessity to separate the exhaust system or take the exhaust system down for any reason, take the V band clamps loose here and here, and then the rest of the exhaust system can either stay in place or be removed as necessary. So let me make some cuts here. So what I'm going to install, essentially, this is a V-band clamp. And what this basically does... Stand by. No. Oh, all right. So what this basically does, it comes in three pieces. You've got a collar that the pipe slips into here and you weld around here. Same thing on both sides. These two pieces have got just a little bit of a, a uh, slip edge, I guess you could call it. They'll butt together like this. Then you take your clamp, you stick your clamp on, and as you tighten it down, it'll squeeze these two together. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to break the system so that the slip joints don't determine how I get the exhaust system apart. So let me show you how I'm starting on the car. So what I've done is on my pipe coming from the header on both sides, I basically cut it at the slip joint that was in the middle. I'm going to put my clamps in here. And the nice thing about doing it right here is, I know it looks a little bit off at this point, but the nice thing about this is I left myself plenty of room for the slip joint so I don't have to worry about it being so tight in here that I've got to clearance for the clamp itself. Same thing on this side. I've got plenty of room here for my slip joint. So I'm going to weld up the ends of the clamps, or I should say tack the welds of the clamps, get those installed, and we should have the clamps done. So I've got both pieces on the uh, my little workbench here. Basically, the only thing about installing these that you kind of need to keep in mind is make sure that you're, it's better if your pipe is fully seated in the little uh, slot there. Which it is. So I'm going to tack this in. Just going to hit it in a couple of spots to hold it. There's one side. Sometimes it's a could be a little bit of a struggle to get it to seat. There we go. In. Because the pipe is not always completely round like the clamp is. Just making sure it's fully seated. That looks good. Same thing. I hit a couple of tacks on it. Now, of course, these welds will have to be fully welded all the way around. I got to get the TIG welder out for that. I'm hoping that my TIG welding skills will improve to the point where I can do it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to have somebody come in and do it. You know, somebody that actually can weld. So we'll see how that goes. Let me go ahead and reinstall these and let's take a look at uh, what it looks like on the car. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. The one thing about a V-band clamp is they're pretty unforgiving about misalignment. 
But I think, that, you know, I mean, since it was already in the first time, I think I'm going to be okay. So that one's clamped. That one looks good. Let's see if we can get the clamp on it now. I'm going to want the clamp to go this way. So I've got to pull it out, slide it over, come back here, get back in there. And get my nut on it and get that one started. All right, let me work on this one here. Looking good there. Now I'm going to want my nut to come this way. Clamp on. All right. So now all I got to do is tighten them up. And the biggie on this one is make sure everything is kind of aligned. I will have a little bit of wiggle room because of my slip joint's here. So let's uh, tighten them up, see what it looks like. I can crank down on them a little bit more than that during final assembly, but that's going to be plenty good to hold everything together. Do the same thing over here. So with my V-band clamps in, at this point what I've got is I have the ability to separate the exhaust system just by taking these clamps loose, taking my band clamp loose, then I can rotate this pipe down, slide it back. Same thing on this side, I can take my band clamp loose, rotate it down, slide it back and off. And at this point the X-pipe will be, sep I can separate the X-pipe at the mufflers. I can separate the mufflers with band clamps. I can separate the mufflers from the tailpipes and then the tailpipes are going to be one piece from here all the way out to the tailpipes themselves, the tips themselves I should say. But just by lowering the rear end I can get that out. So the exhaust system can be removable. I've got two final things to do on this. One is hangers. And I'm hoping I can get to those on this episode. And the last part will be just welding all my joints. So that's where we're at. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this week. That's about as far as I could get. I'm waiting on parts. And, well... You know, I'm the dummy that didn't order ahead of time and have the parts sitting here. But at the same time, some of the parts, you don't know that you need them until you need them. And that's what happened in this case. So I'm still waiting on band clamps for the mufflers. So I'll have to finish up the exhaust system next time. Oh, wait. We have one more segment to go. This is the special treat I was telling you guys about. Wheels and tires came in. We're going to go and mount them up and see what it looks like. Definitely got to put the rotors on, and I'm going to go ahead and put the calipers on too. We won't have any clearance issues, but it never hurts to check. Put the rear caliper and pad on, or rear caliper and rotor on.
First time in maybe 20 years. It's not the first time in 20 years it's been sitting on wheels. This is the first time in we don't know how long, at least 20 years or longer, it's been sitting on a decent set of wheels. A really good set of wheels and tires. She is sitting on her new wheels and tires. Let's take a quick look, see at them. The tires are Continental Extreme DWS6 Plus. The wheels came from OE Wheels out of Sarasota, Florida. These are actually reproduction wheels for the um, C7. I believe it's like a 2014 uh, C7 Corvette. The rear tire size, 285, 35, 18s. Front tire size, 245-40-18s. That's about where the stance is going to be. I'm thinking I might have gone just a smidge low, which is better than being too high because like the coilovers can make that up. Might think about raising it a half inch or so, but man, it has got a really aggressive stance right now. How's that for the makings of a Firebird? Let's take a quick peek underneath. There is just a little bit of space between the rubber, but not a whole heck of a lot. There you have it guys, that's today's surprise. Well, I'm telling you guys, I think the car looks pretty darn good sitting on its new wheels and tires. That's really all I've got for you this week. Certainly appreciate everybody watching. Big thanks to everybody that's been following along. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really does help me out. I'll catch you guys next week.